Hey, hey guys, welcome to my channel. So I'm so excited because I'm gonna be sharing with you guys our family subjects for the 2023-2024 homeschool year. I am so excited because all of my kids are going to be together this year. I'm homeschooling all four of them. Well, one of them's a baby, but my oldest was in public school at the beginning of last year, and then he had a bowel obstruction, was in the hospital, and then I brought him home to homeschool, and I promised him I would homeschool him from then on out. Um, so it was kind of just a tumultuous year last year, but I'm really excited for this year. I've been preparing all summer long, like you guys. It has been so much fun. It has been so much fun to prepare all summer long, get organized, and hopefully know what to expect this year and just prayerfully we will not have any crazy interruptions with this homeschool year but we got through it last year so i know if we got through last year we can get through it this year so anyway this video holds a special place in my heart because it's family subjects it's things that we are all going to be doing together for the most part i will share because i do have a large age gap between my oldest and my younger ones so I will share some things that I'm going to just do all with the little ones, um, just to give you guys some ideas um, and just to give a realistic view. But I am going to be doing a lot of stuff as a family with everybody from my teenager, my high schooler, down to my baby. So I am very excited to share that with you guys and let's just get started. So of course I have bins because I've been on a big organization kick and if you've watched any of my other videos. I've already posted our preschool curriculum picks, our first grade curriculum picks, and our ninth grade curriculum picks. So if you haven't watched those videos, definitely check those out if you haven't already. But um, this is something, before I get into my bins and all my stuff that I have organized, this is another thing I've been working towards organizing and I actually could not find it. So I talked about this in some of those curriculum videos and said I couldn't find it literally just found it it was blending in since it's black with a black laptop and i just couldn't see it and it was driving me crazy but i found it you guys i found it this precious trusty old binder that's kind of falling apart but inside this binder is our first family subject that we are going to start with this year and that is gather around chemistry now you may think okay did i tell you the ages of my kids my kids are 14 six, four, and one, almost two. She'll be two next month. So basically, and actually Carter will be 15 next month, which is crazy. So almost 15, six, four, and two is my ages for my kids. Um, so from high school down to a baby, you would think it would be weird though to do chemistry with such little ones, but Gather Round, this is my first ever time using Gather Round. I'm very excited to try it out. It is a family style curriculum and they claim to cover everything except for math in this. Now that's not how I'm going to be using it where all of their subjects are in here besides math. Check out my curriculum picks if you want more info on that. But I like that it's a science that I can use with all of my kids. So that is what I plan on doing. This is actually the elementary or, or no, early reader version. So I got this for my six year old and his I printed out and I put it in these page protectors and I haven't quite decided if when he writes on it, I'm just going to have him write on the page protectors or if we're going to take it out. I think we're going to take it out and I'm going to have him physically write on it just so I have something physically finished that I can see that he did and I can keep it in his like homeschool bin of what he did because it's funny that he'll be a first grader doing chemistry so I think I'm going to want to save it yeah so I am going to take it out of the page protectors but I just thought this would be a nice way to organize it and I can just take out what we're working on and put it in one of those um we're going to sit down on the couch and do this together as a family. And so I'm going to get one of those clipboards and just put the pages for that day on his clipboard. And then I did not print anything else out. Um, so the teacher's guide, I'm going to pull it up on my phone and screencast it onto our TV in our living room. So that way I don't even have to print it. I just bought the PDF version for everything. So I don't even have to print that. Just going to screencast it on the TV. I think that works really well with us all sitting on the couch together as a family doing this. 
And then um, the little one will have his physical copy on a clipboard. And then my oldest, who is 14, he will have it on his laptop. He has essential tremors, which means his hands shake. So writing is tiring for him. Um, and so I wanna teach him how to utilize like the computer. I want him to get really good at typing so that he can kind of make up for, you know, that kind of disability by being a really good typer. So he is just gonna pull the PDF off, pull up the PDF on his laptop and type away on it. And then um, for my preschooler and my baby, I actually think I'll probably do this during nap time because the baby, she's almost two and she's a wild one and she will probably just disturb us. <laughs> Honestly, she will just be disturbing things. So I guess I'm not really including my baby in this <laughs> subject. But um, the preschooler, I am just going to print off or have him, I'm going to pull up some of the coloring pages. I'm pretty sure I didn't buy like the preschool version um, because I'm pretty sure I can just use some of these pages from the early reader um, for him to color. And luckily he is an artist. My older two were not that into art. But he is an artist and he will spend a long period of time coloring. So I'm going to pull out specific things like markers um, or those dot, the dot markers, regular markers, just things that I don't allow him access to all of the time. I will pull that out and let him just color away while we do that. And if he decides he wants to go play with his toys or whatever while we're doing this, that's fine too. The only ones that will be required to join us for chemistry is going to be my 15 year old and my six year old, but I'm very excited. I also got the um, experiments book and I did not print that either. I think I'm just going to print out like an experiment at a time is I think what I'm going to do, but we are going to do the experiments as well as a family and I'm going to include my preschooler in that because I know he will enjoy it. He's very, you know, like I said, artistic and he likes to build things and everything. So I think that he will really enjoy sitting all around in the kitchen and doing experiments with his big brothers. So that is our first family subject. That is what we are going to do starting out this school year. We are starting this Friday, I believe. It's kind of crazy. Well, we're doing our celebration first day of school this Thursday, which means we're going to go to the mall and we're going to window shop and we're going to talk about um, financial things and we're going to get a cookie or a smoothie and it's just going to be like a fun kind of homeschool field trip type thing for our first day. We did something similar last year. So that's what we're gonna do for our first day. Also happens to be my birthday, so it'll be a fun day for us. <laughs> and then the next day on a Friday is when we're gonna start our book work. And really, we're just gonna kinda pull things out. I'm gonna have my oldest like start logging into his online classes and just kinda start working on our routine. We're going to very slowly ease into school. So. Anyway, this will be our first family subject for science. Um, so basically, we are going to be doing all our science subjects together for the most part, although watch my oldest ninth grade video for more info on that. But our family subjects are mostly science um, with a little bit of art and um, Bible. But anyway, so next up that I will share is these bins. So in these bins, I have decided to organize our science units from the good and the beautiful. I love this. This is such a good way to organize them. You can see which science unit it is right on the top because it's clear. So I love that. And they just all fit perfectly in here with the book packs that go along with them and everything. So I will show you guys these. So the next one, which we actually started this last year, but like I said, we had a crazy year last year. Um, so a lot of things were left unfinished and I'm trying to be more of a minimalist just all over in my life, um, including my homeschool. And so I want to make sure we use all the resources we have. I used to be like a wasteful maximalist basically, and we wouldn't even use all the resources we have. And then especially with our disrupted year last year, we did it. So my goal is to use everything. So we will continue. We only did, I guess, two lessons in this. This is the health and the human mind unit from The Good and the Beautiful. We only did two lessons last year, 
but we loved it. Like we had a blast doing this. Me, it was just my 14 year old and my six year old. My preschooler did not join because he wasn't in preschool yet. And so I just kind of left him like doing baby stuff. This year I'm gonna have him join us. And like I said, if he gets bored, whatever, wants to do something else, I'm gonna set up like a busy bin or some kind of art. I'm gonna have some activity for him to do with his hands and he can just listen. And I'm, my goal is to teach him how to do that, how to be really good at coloring or whatever, but listening to a read aloud or listening to a science unit, um, just so he can kind of soak things in. Kids soak in so much stuff that you don't even realize. So we have this and we have the um, uh, seventh to eighth grade student journal. Did I not get the journal? For my little guy I guess not I probably thought he was too young because technically this is for third to eighth grade and so I thought it would be too difficult for him anyway so um, I'll just have him journal in his own little notebook I think is what I did last year but I like this a lot because it's super um, organized it's so much better like back in the day the good and the beautiful science units would come not even bound and um, they definitely didn't have these little workbooks and you had to do a bunch of cutting and putting things together and it was just you know it took time and it wasn't as minimal and organized the good and the beautiful has gotten so good about being more minimal and organized which i love so this is your lesson and it gives you instruction on what to say um which i love and then there's just a lot of like hands-on things like one of them was um i had them close their eyes and I would like touch them with a feather and different things and I don't know, it was funny. It was just funny and fun. Um, and then I like that the student journal is just all here. It's super easy to just pull up and um, so see like my kids are not artists. Also this is my son who has trimmers. So anyway, I think what I had them do is work together to um, fill this out. Uh, the different parts of the branching nerves, I guess. <laughs> And then the extension is for my oldest. He reads something and then writes about it. So, um, and then see, we labeled things. So, and then we printed this off and colored it, the brain and talked about that. So we did that all last year and we had a great time doing it. And then it also, I also have the book packs in this bin. So all this fits in here. It's so organized and nice. And so um, I have the addiction questions and answers book. So this is going to be something I will read with my oldest. I'm not going to bring my six year old into that topic yet. But then the amazing thing called memory. And um, I'm definitely gonna read this with both of them. And then a penny for your thoughts. I think this is also perfectionism, overthinking, low self esteem and pressure to please other. Tilly explains all these thoughts during her first year of choir camp. I'm going to read this because it could be good for my six year old like to talk about those types of things but it may be too much for him. He may be too young so that might just be for my oldest as well but the unit lets you know when to read those things. And then actually in here I have something extra that I threw in to go with this unit so that's another nice thing. It's all organized so I'll actually use the extras I buy. I find that when I'm disorganized, I don't end up using the extras that I get. So this is my growth mindset workbook. This is really cool. I got this at Target and it's actually, um, you can reuse it because it's just, you use like a dry erase marker and wipe it clean. But I love this, like the learning journey. It talks about you have a new challenge. This is new. What do I do? I don't understand. I have lots of questions. This is difficult. I'm at the point of the pit. Do I quit? I'm going to ask for help. I need more practice. I believe I can do this. I'm working hard. I've got it. Yes, I can do it. So I think that's so cool. So it just has different activities on talking about having a growth mindset. Um, so this is something that I'm going to work with them as well as we go along. I just think it fits well with this um, health and human mind unit. Um, so I like that that's in there. So that is our next like family subject for science that I'm very excited to do. The next one is another The Good and the Beautiful Science. This is weather and water. Um, so, and it says third through eighth. I don't have anyone in those grades. I have a ninth grader and a first grader that, and a preschooler, but I don't care because we make it work. We've done it with the other ones. So 
I know we can I, we haven't started this one yet but I love how organized it is it has all of the vocab words which is always good for any age my dad to this day reads books and will highlight words he doesn't know and looks them up and adds them to his notes. He's the cutest thing ever. So anyway, and he's 70. So you can be learning new vocab words for many years. Um, this one I did get both because Henry, the third to um, student journal for third to sixth graders and then seventh to eighth graders because Henry's been really wanting to learn about the weather. So I figured he would like having his own book and I'll just help him with it. Um, and then we also have the book pack that you can buy. This one has changing weather. This one's about like a, um, the, it's a true story of June Bacon Bercy. I don't know if that's how you say her name. I think she was the first weather woman. So that's really cool. And then the schoolhouse blizzard and then wild, wild wind. And then this one I love, the beauty of weather. And it's just these beautiful pictures like art of different types of weather um, and it talks about it so it's like an art study which I think is so cool I love the gonna be cool okay so that will be the next unit that we do as a family and then this is a unit I brought bought a while back um, that we started and like I don't even know what happened so we're gonna do it this year um, but this is marine biology for grades three through eight. I have both. Oh, cute. Henry wrote his name. They even have their names in it. But for some reason, we didn't finish it. I think we got bored and we switched to the other one. But I want to finish this. So grades three through six and seven through eight workbooks. And we already have some of the um, vocab words cut out. Um, and then we have the book pack with this as well. Explore the ocean floor. This one is really cool. And then we have uh, dangerous sea creatures. Henry and I are really into the show. My friend got us onto it on Disney Plus called Something Bit Me. And your kid has to be, I mean, her kids are kind of more sensitive to scary stuff and it doesn't bother them, but it is about people that get like attacked by wild animals and stuff. So your kid has to be like not sensitive and not get like nightmares and stuff at night probably to watch it. But Henry and I love it. Um, and so I know he's just, he's just at that age where he's so interested in animals. And my husband is like, why are you watching people getting like attacked on the show? Something bit me. And I'm like, it's science because you learn the science behind the animals and why they do what they do and what happens when you get bit by a snake and it's like um you learn about the human body how it affects the human body what you should do and and then it's like preparing for what you should do in an emergency if you get bit by a snake or attacked by an animal so there's lots of benefits to it so and then it's suspenseful and interesting so anyway um, we will watch some episodes of Something Bit Me and do this science unit as well. Okay, so those are all of the science units that we're going to do as a family this year. If we get through all of this, then I will purchase more, but I'm not going to. The only thing I purchased this year was the chemistry one because I knew I wanted to do chemistry with my oldest. Um, so that's why I went ahead and purchased that even though we had other science units. But I want to get through all of these and then if we do that we will buy more of course. But we also have, so that's like for my oldest and basically the three boys. But then we also have um, Science for Little Hearts and Hands by the Good and the Beautiful Fields and Flowers. Um, this is, there's lessons, science lessons in this and this is the big book of science stories. And so this is like a nature study type thing. And we've done, I think we did one lesson in this and that was it. And, but it was really fun. Oh, you know what? I need to get the book pack, clearly. What a mistake. I did not get the book pack. Um, so I'm gonna get that. But um, <laughs> we did, we did this one. Oh, somebody ripped it. That's great. We did, uh, oh, this is so cute. So it says trees that live and sleep. It has a poem, movie time. You pull up trees, watch trees that live and sleep with the child. Um, I love that. So it's just fun, like nature study type stuff, but I can't find the one we did. I swear we did one where we went out 
Um, we live near green belts, which is really nice. So it's really easy to do like a nature study just right out our front door. Um, and so we went out, we got some leaves and we did those like where you press them and color them or whatever. So my goal for my little ones this year is to get outside a lot and my oldest. And so I want us to do some nature study type stuff as a family. And I don't think it has, I didn't buy like a specific nature study science unit besides this because I already own this. <laughs> so we are going to try to use this up this year. Um, but there are some really good nature study things that like I would love to buy. But I just told myself, no, we already have this. And then um, I just want us to get like some notebooks, bring some notebooks out. We'll go outside. We can write about what we see. We can draw what we see. We can even do like math out there. Like with my little one, I was thinking my Jack who's four, we could like get some rocks and he can count them. And then my six year old, he can like add, um, practice adding some rocks or whatever and then even my 14 year old we could do like estimates like how tall do you think this tree is and then we can look up how tall that particular tree gets and so just kind of like naturally do it just I think when I allow myself to just do fun things and not tie myself down with curriculum too much it's more fun like doing the mall thing that was something that I got an idea from a curriculum and then I just kind of went with it and did my own thing and it was really fun so trying to leave some freedom for us uh, but that's the one other thing that I wanted to show you guys for family subjects um, is before five in a row. I think I already showed this in like my preschool video or something, but I wanted to mention it again because we are going to be doing ideas from this as a family. So like um, corduroy. And I am not opposed to my 14 year old listening to a children's book because he is an amazing writer and I think he can learn from children's books and like there's just different types of books and how you write them. Oh, you made me It some... does some ten, it does a ten play your face. Oh, come here. You, you, want, to, you want to say hi in the video? Hi. This is my Jack Jack. You <laughs> can just pretend to eat it. Oh, just pretend? Okay. This is, what is this? I mean, strawberry. Sand. Strawberry kinetic sands. This has been a big hit. The, a set we have for ice cream. See, there's Henry. <laughs> so this is what the boys are doing while I'm filming. Okay, y'all go. Just watch um the brown play and the white play Okay, so sorry for that interruption, but they're too cute. So anyway, um, I think he can learn from writers of children's books, and then um, like it has fun things like um, I talked about this where. It talks about budgeting because I don't know if you've read the corduroy book, but the mom says that they've already spent too much money and they can't buy corduroy and then the kid comes back with her piggy bank and buys them herself. So we can talk about budgeting and that's a big thing I want to teach my son um, with homeschooling is like life skills, like how to deal with money and how and then like how to feed your body good foods and stuff like that. So. Even him is he is going to do before five in a row with us, which is for like very young children. But we're gonna do that. There's something on manners. Like everyone can learn manners. Adults need better manners, you know. Homes and habitats, um, Bible, science. So we're gonna do this as a family, even my 14 year old, and I'm very, very excited. It was actually really cute. So I will end this video on this little story. My 14 year old, he's never like that excited for school to start. But um, he said, as I was telling him, I, I like to tease him and I'm like, oh, school's starting next week, woo, so exciting, you know. And he was like, well, you know, it's not so bad because I know I get to be with you. And that just like, I could ball. Like I just, he's so sweet to me and that is what's most important to him. He's 14, almost 15. You think teenagers, and he likes his time alone, like don't get me wrong, he wants to go up in his room with his mini fridge, watch the Astros on TV and do his thing. He needs his privacy. But he still craves so much to be a part of our family unit. And um, I just think that is so important and above all book work and all things that you can learn um, in your years of schooling, I think the most important thing is having a loving family that is consistent, that is there for you, have family dinners. Family dinners 
is linked more to kids doing well in school and having high self-esteem than almost anything else, like just doing family dinners consistently every night. So um, that is a big thing with our family subjects is I just want us being together as a family and doing things. And even when we're doing our individual subjects, you know, trying to be together while we're working as much as possible um, and just having a really strong family culture and building that um, is the most important thing to me for this homeschool year. So above anything else, that's what's most important. And I realized I don't need to keep spending money and money, more money and money and getting more stuff thinking that is going to somehow make our education better and our lives better when really it's so much more simple than that, you know? So anyway, that is it for today's video. I'm going to film my morning basket next, so definitely stay tuned for that video. If you enjoyed this one, please give it a thumbs up. That supports my channel, lets YouTube know you like my videos. And um, subscribe if you're new. Click the bell to be notified when I post new videos. I'll see you next time. Bye.